Welcome to the instructional video for the Owens Corning Atticat Expanding Blown-In Insulation System. This video is intended to give you a comprehensive overview of the installation process. We'll visit the home of a couple using the Atticat system for their attic insulation project. The Atticat system features the Atticat machine, Atticat expanding blown-in insulation, and insulation accessories to complete your project. Atticat expanding blown-in insulation expands 16 times when blown through the Atticat machine. It installs quickly with low dust and low mess. Atticat expanding blown-in insulation maintains the installed R value for life with virtually no settling and is backed by a lifetime limited warranty. The Atticat machine features lightweight two-piece construction that makes it easy to transport. The self-feeder and auto cutter make it easy to load without making a mess. It runs on one standard 15 amp outlet and can be controlled from the attic with a hose mounted remote. Keep the following safety tips in mind when working in your attic. Walk only on the ceiling rafters or joists and not on the ceiling. You can also place a piece of plywood or OSB over the joist to walk across in the attic. Be careful of overhead obstructions and nails penetrating through the roof deck. Before you begin, determine the recommended R value needed for the job. You'll find a Department of Energy chart with recommended R values in the Owens Corning Project Planning Guide, which can be found at owenscorning.com. For instance, if you live in Zone 5, the Department of Energy recommends an attic R value of up to R60. Now look at the Atticat coverage chart, located on the Project Planning Guide, and on the back of each bag of Atticat expanding blown-in insulation. Find the required inches to reach the desired R value. For R60, you'll need 20 inches of insulation. Measure the attic space to get the square footage to determine how much insulation you'll need. In this case, 50 feet times 20 feet equals 1,000 square feet. Measure the existing insulation and subtract it from the number recommended on the coverage chart. In this case, there's only 10 inches of existing insulation. Subtracted from the 20 that is needed to achieve the desired R value, you will need to add 10 more inches. Now look at the coverage chart and the insulation bag again. It shows you the correct depth to achieve the most common R values. In this case, when adding the closest depth of 10.25 inches, each bag will cover 65.4 feet. A thousand square feet divided by 65.4 feet per bag equals 15.29 bags of insulation needed for this job. Round up to 16 bags to ensure that you have the correct number of bags to allow for proper coverage. Before you start blowing insulation, examine the attic to be sure it is adequately ventilated. For attics, the building code requires a minimum net free vent area of one square foot of ventilation for every 150 square feet of the ventilated attic space. This ratio can be reduced to 1 to 300 if a balanced intake and exhaust system or a properly placed vapor retarder is utilized. For more information on ventilated attic space, visit owenscorning.com. Do not block e-venting or soffit vents with insulation. Use vent baffles, such as Owens Corning Rafter made attic vents between e-vents and the attic to ensure airflow. Fold the optional air stop hinge and staple the baffle to the exterior wall top plate to prevent insulation from falling into the soffit. Use pieces of bat insulation to block any gaps. If it's not possible to attach the rafter made baffle to the exterior wall plate due to roof slope or obstructions, stuff a piece of bat insulation into the gap between the top plate and the baffle, ensuring that the soffit vent is unblocked. This will allow air intake to flow freely through the baffle along the roof deck. Inspect any ductwork in the attic and make sure all connections are sound. If necessary, seal duct joints prior to installing insulation. Seal leaks around pipes and penetrations with a foam sealant, such as Owens Corning Pink Foam Sealant. Maintain a minimum clearance of 3 inches around any heat generating sources in the attic, such as recessed lights. The Smart Cap Attic Recess Light Cover provides specified clearance between the thermal insulation and non-IC rated recessed light fixtures. 
If a light fixture is labeled IC rated, building code allows you to blow insulation over it. However, using smart cap recessed light covers on all recessed lights allows the light to vent excess heat so that it doesn't reach the maximum safe temperature that trips the thermal safety switch. Using a staple gun, install attic hat rulers on joists, roof trusses, or vertical framing to measure how much insulation you're adding. Install one per every 10 feet so that they are clearly visible. Install a rigid barrier around the attic access opening to prevent insulation from falling out when you open the attic door. You can use Owens Corning Foamular Rigid Foam Insulation cardboard, or lumber. Be sure the barrier is taller than the thickness of the insulation you plan to install. Now that the attic is properly prepped, begin preparing the attic hat machine to start blowing insulation. Carefully remove the machine from your vehicle. Keep the attic hat machine outside the house or in the garage. If you dismantle the machine to transport it, you simply need to reattach the top portion to the bottom and lock into place. The machine will not operate unless the top and bottom are properly aligned. The Attic Hat machine comes with two 50-foot sections of hose. The compressed insulation expands as it travels through the hose and contacts the ridge sides. At least 100 feet must be used to properly condition the material and get full label coverage. Up to 150 feet of hose can be used. The Attic Cat system has many safety features for your protection. For your safety, please pay attention to these cautions and warnings. Keep hands and tools away from any moving parts. Do not remove the top of the machine while it's in operation. If you attempt to do this, it will stop operating immediately. The Attic Hat also has a main power switch that gives the machine operator the opportunity to turn the machine off at any time. Do not attempt to clean the Attic Hat machine or hose until the machine is completely off and the extension cord is disconnected. Never operate the Attic Hat machine if it or the operator is standing in water. Serious injury could result. Please note. Owens Corning shall not be responsible for any injury, damage, loss, cost, expense, or liability related to failure to follow these instructions. Failure to follow these instructions may affect Owens Corning's obligation under this product's limited warranty. Now you're ready to start prepping for the installation. Lay drop cloths in the house and protect corners with cardboard or other material along the path of the hose to protect walls, floors, and other surfaces. Run the hose into the attic. Extend enough hose to reach the furthest point in the attic. Note that attic cat machines project insulation a distance of approximately 8 to 10 feet. You may need to relocate the machine closer to the house in order to reach all areas of the attic. Connect the hose to the machine by twisting the coupler to the right and ensure it's securely attached. You'll need a 14-gauge extension cord up to 50 feet or a 12-gauge extension cord up to 100 feet. Connect the cord to the machine and a standard grounded 110-volt outlet with at least a 15-amp circuit. Make certain that all breakers and ground fault circuit interrupters are turned on. When you attach the extension cord, the main power light will illuminate. The attic hat machine can now be operated from either the remote or the control panel. When you press either the start or stop buttons on the remote, indicator lights will illuminate, showing you that the remote battery is good and the radio frequency signal is being transmitted. If the remote does not operate, return to the store or call 1-800-GET-PINK for assistance. When ready for the flow of insulation, the installer in the attic will press the green button on the remote located on the hose. The machine's blower will start, and after a few seconds, the agitators will begin to rotate. The machine may be stopped by either the attic installer or the machine operator by pressing the red stop button on either the remote or the control panel. The machine's feeder is specifically designed to accommodate a half bag of Atticat pink fiberglass blown-in insulation. Using a knife, cut the bale of insulation along the cut line, making sure the knife cuts at least one half inch into the insulation. Break the package in half. Hold the half bag by the end flaps and insert the cut end into the machine. 
push a half bag completely into the feeder until it stops. The built-in auto cutter will cut the plastic packaging to release insulation into the machine. It's important that you remove the packaging because it may clog the machine and should be removed once a half bag has released. When the bag is properly aligned with the auto cutter, it should slide in and cut easily. If it binds, reposition it rather than attempting to force it. Add another half bag of insulation once the machine feeder has emptied and the agitator paddles can be seen through the window. Do not attempt to forcefully push or hand feed loose insulation down into the machine. Let the machine do the work for you to avoid jams. The machine is now ready for the installer to start blowing insulation. Press the green button on the remote located on the hose to start blowing insulation. Direct the hose toward the eaves and begin by blowing insulation at the point furthest from the attic opening. Insulation should flow out of the hose and fall onto the surface 8 to 10 feet away. As each attic section is filled, move slowly backward toward the attic opening. Repeat this process until the attic is fully insulated. When you are close to the attic opening, use a gloved hand to deflect the insulation downward. When the job is complete, the attic should have a flat, level layer of insulation throughout. All of the bags calculated should have been used. This ensures that you're getting the intended R value. Don't forget to clean up the area, especially around the access hole. Cover the attic entry door with either an attic hatch insulator or an attic stairway insulator. The attic hatch insulator should be cut to the size of the hatch door and stapled to the door. Then position the door back into place. By following the simple directions in this video, you'll find insulating attics with the Owens Corning Attic Hat Expanding Blown-In Insulation System is an easy do-it-yourself project. Your efforts will reward you with a more energy-efficient and comfortable home for many years to come.